of hearing we're all living of in the future tears. right now that was Absolutely. insane we were watching it on the big screen right here and, and it I was love magical this graphic because obviously they were watching those engines very closely and matt if you scooch just a little bit of two over there yeah you will see down there those the are speed. the engines that they were keeping a oh, close yeah. eye on and we were waiting for that main engine cut off, most engine cut which off. is now most engine <laughs> cut off uh but very exciting for spacex and now of course we're waiting for those chopstick arms to yes. come and grab it do not go anywhere the mechazilla is about to get a little action they were able to catch the booster last time with those chopstick mm -hmm. arms and now it is headed back to earth and in just a few minutes, with a test flight in a few minutes, as that super heavy booster returns to Earth, they're going to attempt to catch it with that. And we're going to take a live look at that as it happens in just a few minutes. Yeah, of course, this was the sixth test flight uh, since... Um 2023, I believe, since April of 2023. Uh, SpaceX's holy grail for landing on the moon and Mars, of course, taking off from Texas. We know NASA's invested in this big rocket as well. So we want to bring in News 6's James Barbero, who is at Kennedy Space Center, looking to answer some of the big questions about future missions. In the last year and a half, Bill Harwood of CBS News has really helped us gain perspective on the progress Bill SpaceX is making building off of each flight test, the sixth one right now. I think it's encouraging to see it only took them a month since flight number five. Would you feel the same way? Is that how you would analyze it? Yeah, it's really impressive when you consider the sheer scale of this rocket. You know, it's almost 40 stories tall, generating up to 16 million pounds of thrust when it takes off. And as we all saw in that last test flight last month, the first stage was able to fly itself back and be caught by those chopstick mechanical arms on the launch gantry. That was amazing to anybody who's watched rocket launches out here for as many years as I have. Remarkable, of course, but we have to put into the big picture, they still need to be ready to land NASA's astronauts on the moon. How far out are we still away from that? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. You know, to get the Starship Lunar Lander to the moon, you have to refuel it in Earth orbit. They're gonna have to launch enough of these test flights to prove the system is reliable, reliable enough to trust human lives on board. That's gonna be a challenge. It's a challenge for NASA to get its own rocket off the ground. The SLS for Artemis II is here right now at Kennedy Space Center. NASA's own Office of Inspector General, though, has called the whole program unsustainable with how expensive it is. That's right. There's a new administration coming into Washington. We know how close Elon Musk is to Donald Trump. Do you think there's any chance that SLS could get canceled? Those are the rumors on the Internet, for now at least. Yeah, I hear those rumors, too. And uh, I don't like to speculate about things like that because we just don't know. This is one of those projects that's so big, you know, maybe it might be too big to fail if you want to think about it that way because of all the money that's already been spent. But clearly, uh, with the inspector general's conclusion, it's unsustainable. I think there's a lot of people that believe that. If NASA can't figure out a way to really bring down the cost of that rocket, then yeah, I think its future is very uncertain. Over the next four years, SpaceX expects to launch Starship hundreds of times. We'll see if that includes here. I've watched the company construct that launch tower at Pad 39A over the last couple of years. At NASA's Kennedy Space Center, I'm James Sparvero, getting results new six.